Okay, here's the next machine. It is a Trizone, Williams Trizone. I think from 79, I'll have to look it up. A lot of smoke uh, on the play field. The play field glass is broken. So it's had years of dust and smoke on the play field. I did wipe down the outside with um, Windex, actually. Usually I use Craig Cutter, but this red paint seemed to, the Craig Cutter really seemed to kind of eat into it. So I didn't want to damage the red surface. Uh, but I'll take a few pictures of before and after, kind of show what it looked like on that play field before and after I clean it. So here's the inside of the back box. Actually, it's very clean. Uh, the, this is a System 6 machine. This Trizone is uh, like Gorgar. The batteries in it were 15 years old, and I thought, oh, great. I'm going to have all kinds of corrosion, but they were solid as can be. I don't know how. They were some off-brand name battery, and they were okay. If you're going to have a machine, you're going to store it, pull those batteries out. But I get lucky here, I think. So here's the biggest problem I've got with this Williams Trizone. You see the uh, the metal's been peeled up here, and it's on the other side the same thing. And there's this piece of wood missing that's usually across the this uh, where the back box connects. So I'll show you uh, what that looks like on the back box. So here we are with the uh, the back box, and you can see the bottom of it. Normally this is the base of the back box. This piece of wood right here, this should be part of the cabinet. It should not be part of the back box. And you can look down in here and somebody screwed this to the back box. I think the reason they did that is they must have had some troubles with these these uh, these inset bolts. Uh, I don't know what you call them. Some kind of nuts that go into the wood. My guess is they couldn't get enough bolts from the back box into the cabinet to secure it. So they thought, well, I know, we'll just screw this wood onto the back box and then bend the metal back on the sides of the cabinet, slide it in, and put it in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off and attach it back to the cabinet, fix it up, find some inserts here so that I can do it the right way. That's probably the biggest problem with this machine. Otherwise, it plays well. So here's the power cord. Uh, due to the adventures we had with this, where that piece of wood was missing, uh, the previous owners and I had some fun getting this thing off of here, so we slid it out, and it was not easy. Um, and then I just had to cut the power cord, and it was in bad shape anyway. So I'll, I'll um, see if I can get in here close. Power cord is pretty straightforward. I think it's just going to be soldering on some lugs onto this line filter. And then once I take that piece of wood off the back box, I'll put it back on here, screw it in place. I'm hoping I can just take like a piece of soft wood and then put it on here and bang it back into place and just nice and easy, gently put it on. And then it looks like there might be a screw, or two, a screw on each side that I can put on. So not too bad, I don't think. Okay, so here's the, the back box with that piece of the cabinet that was uh, modified. You can see there's only one T-nut here, so I think what happened is, is the T-nuts are falling out. Rather than replace them, looks like they uh, tried to do something with some just some nuts, and that didn't work, so they put some screws in mounting the back box to this board and then jammed it kind of into the frame. So I'm going to take these three screw, or two screws out and then uh, go find some replacement T-nuts and I might have to like put some wood putty or something in here or Gorilla Glue or Super Glue, I don't know what to hold them. But we'll see how it shakes out. So I took that piece of the cabinet off and I, I don't think this is part of the back box, I think this is part of the cabinet. You can see the the metal clip that normally you slide the back box onto. So maybe that comes off. Yeah, it comes off. So this is the this is the top of the cabinet, or yeah, top of the cabinet, and this little piece of metal is what you slide the back box onto. So they've they've done some interesting work here. So this piece of wood, even though it's uh, not what I want, it is the right size, length and width wise. It really fits in there nicely, flush on the all sides. So I'm going to 
take a piece of half inch birch plywood. I'm going to trace this on there, the outer shape, and cut it out. And then um, I'll use the bottom of the head as a template for the holes, and then I'll cut a new hole in the middle. Basically, I'm going to replace this piece of wood. So here's the supporting wood inside the box, and you can see this is broken loose, which is not a problem once I put it, the piece of wood in here and screw it in. But I'll put some wood glue or something in here and probably put a supporting screw or two in there to keep it solid. Uh, I just think I need to replace that piece of wood here. It looks like 3 inch, three eighths inch plywood should do it. Then i got to find a red paint to match. Then i got to cut, well before I paint it, I'll have to cut holes appropriately and then drill holes and put the T-nuts in that match the cabinet because I'm not convinced that old piece they had in there fully matched and I think that's why they had issues. Okay, pretty straightforward. I just laid the board uh, down on this piece of plywood. It's birch half inch plywood. Trace the line, then use the jigsaw to cut. And then just use a little bit of uh, 60 grit sandpaper, 150 grit sandpaper to smooth it out. Let's see how it fits. All right. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Remember this piece of wood here is loose, but I'll be able to attach all that up, probably put a little bit of glue in there. I think that's going to be nice. Then I'll bend these metal pieces back down. So first got to cut the holes, then I'll paint it, then I'll, um, I'll drill some holes and get it screwed in, and I'll put together and then I'll pound these down. It should be a permanent piece. So ideally I'd use a lighter, uh, a clear piece of paper or something like that to try to get a template off of the bottom of this ba uh, uh, head, but I don't have any good paper. I'm going to try using newspaper. You can see I just put masking tape on the flat side of the paper is up facing the front of the machine. I'm going to find the holes, the four holes, and I'm going to uh, poke them out with a pencil. And then uh, I'll do probably maybe the same thing for the large center hole. Okay, when I set this up, I should have actually set the template piece of paper up from the bottom of the back box which represents the back of the machine. We're going to want the back of the machine to be flush, the back of the head and the back of the cabinet. Those bottom holes are about an inch and a half from the back of the cabinet. So as I, I'm going to move the camera here. As I figure out where to lay this template on, I want to make sure that the bottom hole is an inch and a half from this back edge and then I want to have these holes centered on the board. All right, I did some adjustments to the board. Um, the bottom hole or back hole is an inch and a half from the back of the machine. And then I centered this 22 inch board. It's roughly 22 inches, just a, a little bit under. And I know the holes are 14 inches apart. So I subtracted the difference so that it's centered on this board. I want the bolts to be exactly aligned on the machine. Uh, and then I double checked the work. They are the appropriate length apart. They're the appropriate length from the back of the machine. They're appropriate length um, apart. So now on the middle piece, which is where the cables will go, I just centered a box here. Originally I had it traced from the bottom of the back, the head, you know, the back box. It doesn't really matter. So instead, I'm going to drill four corners and I'm going to use the jigsaw to cut this out so it's a nice, smooth, evenly spread out hole so everything's symmetrical and looks clean and hopefully professional. All right, let's try it out. The drill holes are a little messy, but I'll get those cleaned up. Yeah, that looks good. Evenly uh, distributed across the cabinet. Decent hole. I'm going to take a tack cloth to this and paint it. Try to spray paint on it. I'm going to see how it fits on the bottom of the back box first, though. Yeah, I just did a quick alignment check. Looks like the bolts are going to be okay. They don't have that space or piece of wood in yet, so just wanted to make sure the holes lined up right. So here's the replacement board. I was going to make a template of it, but then I decided I could just measure it and uh, cover what I needed. The length is 21 and 3 quarters inches. The width is 6 inches and 3 quarter inches. And then these holes are 14 inches apart on center and 3 and a half inches apart on center going this way. This is the piece of wood that uh, the back box attaches to. And it's it's seen better days. You can see the wood's pretty separated there. Down at this end, this joint's kind of questionable. 
I think what I'm going to do is probably just try to um, put some wood glue in there and clamp it and see if the glue will hold. And then I think I'm going to try to reuse this. I debated making a new one, but yeah, it's beat up. But the machine, it's going to match the machine as far as wear look. And then on this, I think what I can do, I might try to kind of tack it on here with super glue and then put a couple screws in from underneath and then figure out how to mount that to the actual cabinet. So for the T-nuts for the, the bottom of the board, I bought some of these. They're prong T-nuts. You can see they're uh, 3 8 16 by 7 16. So I had to drill 7 16 inch holes here with a 7 16 bit and uh, they should just insert right from the bottom. They go in like this. I'll pound them in so that the bolts have somewhere to connect. So while I'm waiting for that wood glue to dry, I think I'm going to try painting the, the uh, piece I'm putting in. I'm going to try this Rust-Oleum Satin Heritage Red. Uh, I couldn't decide between a gloss and a satin. I thought I'd try a satin first. So I'll give it a coat here and see how it looks after I'm done. Trying a little experiment here. I still got a little bit of cigarette smoke smell inside the cabinet. And I want to try to get rid of that. And I read somewhere on the internet that a couple pieces of simple charcoal will absorb that order. Don't think I'd buy it, but it's worth a shot. I'll see how it works. Okay, doing a little experimentation here. Use wood glue and a standard clamp here. I'm going to let that dry overnight. And then I tried um, some super glue, extra thick. It supposedly dries in 10 to 25 seconds. Extra thick super glue. Put it in here in this weak spot, uh, kind of separated it, squeezed some in there, and then just held it, squeezed it. It wasn't 10 to 25 seconds, it was more like two minutes, but it does, it did lock that baby up nice and tight. So I'm going to experiment with this super thick glue, maybe try to tack this onto that replacement board. I just can't decide if I want to do that because that's going to be pretty permanent, whereas if I screw it on, I could take it off if I wanted to. I'll think about it. Okay, so checking out the piece of wood after glue, wood glue, that looks, boy, as good as new. It's uh, no moving at all. And then the super glue side, also solid. So either one works, either the extra thick super glue or wood glue. I didn't like the original color I sprayed, so I tried a second little brighter red color, see if it's a closer match, let that dry. Okay, so this is a day after I put those charcoal blocks in there, and I'm kind of skeptical, I was skeptical about it, but this thing smells a lot better. I can't tell if the charcoal actually removed it or uh, if it's placebo effect, but I'm going to leave them in there for a while. Well, I didn't like the gloss paint. You can see it on the newspaper there, how shiny it was. So I uh, hit this again with the satin red. It's a little darker than the, ba the original machine, but I think it's much closer. I'm going to fix this loose board here. It's going to be a real simple fix. I'm going to use my best new new best friend, extra thick super glue. Then I'm going to put a clamp on here like this. And if you just watch, just watch right here, you'll see how I'm going to jack that up to where it's supposed to be. And then I'll let the super glue dry for a minute. Should be good as new. All right, after uh, peeling off all the old paint and wood and sanding it down, I put a bead of extra thick super glue around the whole uh, top piece of wood and then put it in place on the replacement piece and then um, put this weighted board across with some weight on it and actually held on each uh, side for a couple minutes just to kind of get that super glue set. Once that's done, I'll put some screws in it. Okay, I added six screws on the underside. These are two inch galvanized screws. I'm gonna get my shadow out of the way here. And I put in six of them, two on each side, there's two on either side, and then one towards the front. And I th you'll see why when I put this thing on. When I mount it onto the cabinet, I'm going to bring in some three inch deck screws, I think three inch, on the back to mount it into place. So uh, I wanted to give this thing some, some uh, stability. All right, I put a bead of, <clears throat> I put a bead of super glue along um, everywhere it touches. The, the board touches, but I have a feeling I'm not getting enough of a, of a seal here. There's kind of a little air gap. However, I put one screw in here, and then I put four in along the back. And then I'm going to take a piece of wood and lay it here and try to pound that metal back down. 
and I'm hoping that's enough to uh, keep everything in place. Okay, here's the cabinet uh, all reassembled. You can see it really doesn't look too bad from the side. Uh, the replace board is right here. With the way the cabinet shades it, you really can't tell that the paint doesn't match, especially once I get the piece of uh, Playfield glass in there. And then I'll have that little black piece that's missing right here. The I don't know the name for it, but it's what the glass goes up against. You won't even be able to see it from the front. I'm not real happy with the way the metal um, pounded back down. 